right, so before we read it, this is uh, kind of middle of the sermon that Jesus preached. We call it, uh, you know, the Sermon on the Mount. And if you went back to chapter 5, verse 1, it begins there. Those first um, 10 Beatitudes, as they're called, blessed is, and so on. We won't go to that. So there's so many things that Jesus speaks about in one sermon. Then you get to chapter 6, and it continues on, of course, and part of that we'll look at today. Then you go into chapter 7. I don't know if there's anywhere in the Bible where in one single sermon, literally, all as many topics are covered as they are, but it, it is tremendous. But, but almost right here in the very middle, we're going to look at what he spoke today. So notice what it says in Matthew 6, 6. It says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. So we're going to pray, and we're going to speak about the reward of the closet. So Lord, I pray that you bless us today. Lord, you said if two or three are gathered in thy name, sometimes that I think has been as we officially meet as we do for church. And then, of course, I believe there's people that would love to have been with other of God's people but may have been in jail like Paul and Silas and others, Lord. And now through history, names that we do not know, and yet they had what would be the official uh, reason and the official setting that could be called church. But you said you'd be in the midst. So, Lord, we all have different burdens here today. We've shared some blessings, and it's wonderful. While there's some that still, while they hear them, it's, it's wonderful to hear, but there's still heavy, heavy burdens in this room and just in this room alone. But, Lord, we know what you're able to do. And just as we think about prayer today, help us, Lord, to think about all the things that are attained. So, Lord, bless us today for Christ's sake. Amen. Very interesting here because we'll go up to, to verse number uh, well, we won't read these, but verses 1 and 2 and so on, right on down to where we just read, he talked about the giving of alms, which would be basically helping other people. And he said there were people that would give, and the main reward that they wanted from that was not the fact that they could help people, but the fact that someone would see that. He even mentioned, he says, when you give, you ought to, it ought to be such to where you, your left hand doesn't even know what your right hand's doing. In other words, the illustration is, privately and the reason why you give is to be a blessing and the fact that God would take whatever you give and would make that just uh, kind of like the feeding of the fishes and the loaves uh, just make it more much more than what your physical gift is so he talked about people that would do that he said in verse 4 that thine alms may be in secret and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly now think about that when the phrase there thy father which seeth in secret, all right? Then you get to verse 5, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to stand, love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you that they have the reward. So there's the reward, the giving, the praying, and any other thing that, that someone could do. There are people that literally do it so that others will see them, and if they see that and they get some kind of praise, some kind of recognition, and, and we're talking about primarily that's the reason why they do it, perhaps the only reason why they do it. It's hard for me to imagine someone who would literally pray, and the only, the, the great benefit they would get out of prayer is that someone would see them do that and think, wow, what a prayer, or wow, that, that's amazing. And God says they've, had, they've got the reward there. But how about the people who pray like the Lord says to pray? And he mentions here this closet. And of course, I looked that up. Everybody knows what a closet is. You keep things in a closet. Uh, by definition, it's either it's something for storage and usually something to kind of close the door to keep people from seeing it, uh, like a, a coat closet or where you store your cleaning supplies, whatever. You know what a closet is. But also it means for privacy reasons. And in this case, that's exactly what the Lord's trying to imply here. He says, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Now, in that day, a closet probably was much like ours. It may have not been a door per se, but it's probably just some covering, some quiet place that a person could get where no one would see him, and then they would pray. Now, when someone prays like that, uh, you've got to know you believe in God because when no one's looking at you, that's not the reason why you pray. And you bow your head and you begin to pray to someone, why would anybody perform that act if they didn't know God. 
other than if someone doesn't know God and there's this constant, just kind of, if someone's out there, I hope you hear me. Uh, I believe prayer, God's people don't pray that way. Uh, I'll say this, I, I did a little research on some music and I, and I was, uh, someone had mentioned some group or some type of music. And I said, Lord, I'm going to listen to this. I want you to tell me, uh, I want you to impress my heart what I'm supposed to have here. I'm not going to go this with any conception at all. I want you to tell me. And I was listening to it. And I would listen to it and I would listen to it. One of the things that I took away from it was the people that were singing, and no doubt the people that had written some of those lyrics, are people that, by my impression, are people that did not know God, but they're just kind of throwing it out there and hoping some way, somehow, that God might be out there, He might be listening. That's a lot like people that say, I don't know if there's aliens out there, but if they're out there, I hope they're, they're, they, they know we're a friendly bunch. You know, that's, that's not God at all. When you got saved, you entered into a relationship. Mark, you were talking about people getting saved there. When you got saved, the first thing that happened is you became a child of God. And he says when you pray here, he mentioned your father. So when you pray, you're not, you're not just throwing words out there hoping the creator of the universe might hear you or, or maybe somehow. Uh, people that know God do not pray like, I hope he just hears me somehow. Uh, there's been songs written like that. I believe there's people that are well-meaning and sincere. But there are definitely lost people who make some kind of stab in the dark by singing music and people follow that kind of stuff and God is not in it and the singers, they know and are not convinced themselves of God's in it. And I believe that. Because I said, Holy Spirit, don't you to tell me exactly what I might be missing here. And a lot of that has to do with people that don't know God. That's why I'm very, I'm very, I'm very uh, careful about music. Everything that's old, by the way, that we sing the hymn book doesn't mean because it's old music means it's good. There's old stuff that's definitely wrong, and there's new stuff that's good. Old has nothing to do with it. I know some people may criticize me about the selection of music, but let me tell you something. If you know God, if you know God, listen to me, then you can pray to that God, and he's going to give you answers. And you have a relationship with God, and people that don't, it's very, uh, people that don't know and other people's not sure if they do, that's why you ought to pray about the music you listen to. That's why things ought to be right. And God will tell us, there's no doubt about it. So when you go in secret and no one's there, and you begin to pray to your God, your Father, your Heavenly Father, one of the most significant things I see about this verse right here that was said about the alms given, he said, Thy Father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret. Now you know that God can see everything. It's not implying God is like, oh, okay, suddenly I see you because you're in a secret place. That's not what it's saying. He's saying here because when you go and you enter into that, that private place and that, that place where you begin to either pour out your heart or make your petitions known to me, he says, I, I especially see that because I know there's no one else you're trying to impress. The only one you want to see you at that moment in the terms of seeing and, and hearing what you've got to say is God. And the people that see God are going to shake this world. They're the people that pray and they pray because their prayer is not some kind of prayer where I hope there's a God perhaps that hears me. Uh, that, that's not Christianity. Look, uh, Christianity is about someone that, that reaches out to God and initially when you reach out to God and you're saying, God, save me, and the Holy Spirit comes into you, you become a child of God. You have a relationship, and you have God with you at all moments then. And that communion ought to be constant. Now, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. There's times you can be walking along, you can pray. Look, you can be praying as you're, as you're uh, fellowshipping here just in your heart. You're praying, Lord, I pray that you bless the service. No one would know it. That kind of prayer. But there's definitely be something about someone who goes into a private place and they pour out their heart to God. And the Bible says that God sees you in that secret place. And then he says he's going to reward thee openly. Now when I think about that openly part, you, 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 you somewhat maybe get the idea that as you pray in secret, that maybe perhaps God, whatever you're asking for, is going to be manifested to people. And I think there's something to that. I think there's something, too, that when you pray privately and no one knows your prayers, and all of a sudden God manifests those things, one, 
Some of those people may not know that you prayed that prayer, but it does bring glory and honor to God when someone says, you know, I have prayed for that, and God certainly has done it. I believe that God does reward those. I think the Bible speaks about this openly. It's, it's not so much perhaps that, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of your way of saying, well, see there, I pray privately, and uh, God, he kind of, he's, he's revealing my prayers. I don't think it's that, but I do believe this. If God rewards openly, it sounds like that people's going to see and know that God did it. It's like if you, if you pray for this service right here and people are blessed, people are helped, perhaps if someone got saved, in your hearts you would know you've prayed that prayer and God has answered that prayer and you see that prayer because there are prayers. You could pray a prayer and you say, God, do this for me. And then when it happens, it's done, and you go, wow. But this openly part is very interesting. God that seeth in secret, and then he rewards thee openly. Uh, I think sometimes there is a, uh, perhaps the word vindication, or God putting some sense of people that uh, are not in it for people to see what you do. Uh, you're not in it to, to make people, you impress people. Uh, I think there's something where God says, because you don't do that, now, I'm going to let people know that you do know me. Uh, there's other places in the Bible where, where, where God would say things, and God says, I'm going to make sure that people, people do know, and I want to get into all of that. But I know this, when someone would give their alms, imagine someone that would do that simply so that others would see them give it. To me, if someone gave in secret the, the blessing and the way God could use that. In other words, it, it is like the feeding of the 5,000. Imagine someone giving someone $5 and saying, I hope people see my giving. And God says, okay, well, you've given someone $5 and they can use it. But imagine God saying, you privately give and no one knows. And God says, I'm going to make sure that gift has my hand on it, has my touch on it. And that's what we need, folks. Hey, our prayers, look, uh, if, if we ever get out of this mess in America, it, 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 it'll, it'll be done through prayer. If, if it's going to happen. And, uh, and I believe that you say, well, well what, what would be the point of maybe going, praying for a country in, in, praying for our country privately or in a closet? Why would it be? Because I think when you get alone, I think God does see the intensity. You know, if we were to hear pray, except for someone who absolutely did it for someone to see him, you know, you don't really get uh, fervent in a public prayer, nor I don't suppose we should. Now, we could be in a certain situation where we're all praying, and, and, and it could really, uh, you could see the fervency in prayer. I believe when those disciples and those ladies prayed, when the Lord said he ascended to heaven, he says, I want you to go and wait for the promise of the Father. I imagine those 10 days of praying was pretty intense. I can imagine that was some pretty intense prayers. I think there was a lot of, uh, of soul-searching. Hey, Peter went from being someone that literally, even after Jesus resurrected from the grave, that the Lord had to go look for him and the other disciples. They're out fishing, and he's kind of, you know, Peter, do you love me? And you see all this happening, and so you don't, see, you don't see in that moment where Peter somehow became so humbled and, quote, right with God, so to speak. You just don't, it, the Bible doesn't say that, but somewhere between Jesus ascending, that 10-day period, and when the power of Pentecost came at the Feast of Pentecost, and Peter is the one who stands up and preaches the sermon with the great power of God. It sounds like to me there was some great power going on in 10 days, and the only thing that we can credit it to is prayer. And they were together, and they prayed, 120 of them, 120 people praying together in prayer. I don't know how intense that was, but I, I can imagine pretty intense. But let me just say this, when you get privately, and sometimes it may, be, it may not be in a, in a long position like this, somewhere where it's private. It may be you go find you a place somewhere on a long trail, out in the woods. No one could hear you. And you get out there and you start praying. That can get very intense. Hey, when Jesus prayed right before his arrest, he sweat as great drops of blood. Now, some say, was it blood? I don't think it was blood. It could have been. If it was, it doesn't matter. Imagine sweating to the point because you're in intense prayer and it just pouring off of you and being so weakened from the state of, of just pouring your soul out that the angels came and ministered to him so that he wouldn't even die there. I don't know, does people pray like that anymore? 
Sometimes, you know, we, you get in certain situations where, you know, it's almost like it's automatic loved ones that, that we want to be healed. Yeah, of course. But I wonder if we could be burdened like that for the lost people. I wonder if we could be burdened like that for this country who no doubt is in a terrible, terrible situation. And to pray and to pray. Well, it sounds like to me when we get in that closet at that private time, and the Bible says, and you shut the door, and you pray to thy Father. This is the Father. This is the one that knows the date in which America struggled during the days because the Holy Spirit that was moving in the hearts of who we call our forefathers, same Holy Spirit today. Imagine uh, the prayers. I, I, I did a sermon about, uh, I think it was a sermon, about, uh, did a study at least about uh, General Washington at the time and uh, Valley Forge. And what a situation that was. And you talk about, hey, politics has always been a problem in our country. Supplies getting to people that should get it. Sometimes it's just a political thing. Well, should we do it? Should you do it? What do we got to do about it? Anyway, they, they survived that. But the story goes that, that, that General Washington had broke away from everyone and he went way out in the woods. Went way out in the woods. And he knew that the army he had was in a desperate situation. He knew the whole thing. And it seems like all the burden almost fell upon him, he felt like it. And they were, the, the British army at the time was a, a stronger, more organized army. But a man came upon General Washington, at least close enough to hear him out there praying. And basically a prayer where, God, if you don't do this, we're done. Now you can imagine the kind of prayer that may have been. When you've got his soldiers back there, some who will may, maybe not make it through the winter. They don't have proper clothing. He's, he's the one that everybody looks to. At that time, they'd already lost some major battles. They had to retreat even. That when they were out there in Valley Forge, they had to retreat from, uh, from Philadelphia because uh, uh, they, they were not winning at that time. And then the tide turned. The tide turned. You know, we can think about all the wars this country's been in, some like World War II, others, the prayers of people. Imagine the people that, that prayed right here at this very spot for soldiers and just for the, for the country to be what it's supposed to be. We must pray. If, 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 if Satan will do anything he can get you not to do, it'll be not to pray. Because prayer, that's where it's at. Prayer is the battle, a, a, a veteran missionary said. And when missionaries say, I need your prayers more than I need your money, if you're, if you're the kind of person that can pray, and you know who you're praying to, and you can get a hold of God. And by the way, let me say this. If you've ever seen God answer your prayer, you'll be a changed person. It's one thing for you to ask other people to pray for you, and you go, wow, that is wonderful, and we go to people like that. You find somebody that knows how to pray and gets hold of God, those people are, are special in their eyes. But what about you? What about if someone came to you and said, uh, brother or sister, I want you to pray for me. And you said in your heart, I'm going to do that. And you know in your heart that when you go to God, if God's going to give an answer, God always gives the answer. If you don't ask, you, you've got your answer. But if God says, you go to God and say, God, I'm going on behalf of somebody, they've asked me to pray. Why me? Now you would expect a preacher to be able to pray, and I do pray. But what about everybody in this room to say, I know how to get a hold of God. Now when you know that, and God wants you to know that, he said right there, part of that openly is, you're going to know that God answered your prayer. And if God says no, then you know that, and you move on. The apostle Paul went to God three times, I believe, for his health. And the idea was, if you would take this thorn in the flesh away from me, here's my thinking. He was thinking, I could do so much more for you. Imagine, uh, and this is how we think. We think, God, if you took this out of my life, I could do more. And the truth is, you may would do far less. Because he said, the Lord said to him, number one, he says, look, my grace is sufficient for thee. In other words, my power, my strength is made known in your weakness. And God says, you know what, if you'll understand I'm your strength, no matter what you're going through. And by the way, the God said, don't ask me no more. Don't keep asking me. You've got your answer the first time. 
the second time, and the third time is, that's done. And Paul says, I was done asking. And I realized God was saying, you know what? I can deal with this because God's going to help me. Now, the question is, I wonder if we've ever prayed like that for anything where you got the answer and God says, okay, there is your answer. Sometimes it's no, and sometimes it's a great big yes. When Paul was on that ship headed to Rome, and uh, those seasoned sailors tried, you know, he tried to tell them, this is, not, this is going to be a very dangerous, dangerous voyage. And they, yeah, whatever, you're a prisoner, and, you know, we, 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 we know the seas. Thank you. But when he got out there, and it was about two weeks plus, and this storm was just raging, and they basically had given up. The old preacher stood up and said, uh, excuse me let, me, let me help, let me help here. He basically says, I know who God is. And the one who's making all this happen, and the very one on this ship, primarily the Apostle Paul, God was going to make sure Paul was going to get there, but, but basically also said every last one of you is going to live. You know, he could have said to Paul, Paul, I'm going to destroy all the soldiers. All of them will die, and uh, you guys will be free men. But you know what? God didn't do that. God let every last one of them live. All those soldiers, prisoners, including Paul, get on another boat, end up back in Rome. But you know what? All their lives were saved because a man who knew how to get a hold of God and knew who God was. Now, here's the thing. You can be saved, but the bottom line is we need to get to know our God. And I don't think you'll ever know him any greater. Now, I know the Word of God, when you read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit speaks. That's, that's, that's wonderful. But when we don't pray... When we don't ask, when we don't say, Father, I'm coming to you on behalf of myself, my family, my country, whatever. God, I'm coming to you. I'm, I'm, I'm pouring out my soul because I know you hear me. And God says, I'm going to reward thee openly. That reward there means there's going to be things that you're going to get because you pray. And I think the closer we get to God, the more that is the spiritual things, not just Lord I need this, I need that. God, matter of fact, if you look down here, look at verse number, uh, uh, verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions. Now, let me bring this back to this music thing again. And this, this may, I'm not trying to offend you, but I'm, I'm trying to help you understand my thinking here. Why would anybody say over and over and over something I'll tell you why, because the Bible gives us the answer. Notice this, if someone was praying and keep saying something over and over. Look what it says. Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. See, the heathen people pray that way over and over and over, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Notice what the next verse says. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father, there you go, knoweth what things ye have need of, before you ask him. Now there's a difference between the importunity in prayer, and we know what that is, but the, the key here is, is you go back to who's doing the praying, it's the heathen. People that don't know God. They're just out there throwing it out there, throwing it out there, and I believe there's some of that music that does exactly the same repetitive, 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 maybe God will hear us, maybe, maybe, maybe. Now some of you may be looking at going, I don't know what you're talking about. I think you need to go to God in prayer for that one. I really believe because our churches have changed and there's people that don't get it and they criticize people that's trying to put their, their pulse on God's pulse and some people don't understand. That's why you, you, you look, if you, know, if you know somebody that prays and gets a hold of, gets, gets a hold of God, you, you might better listen to some of their wisdom. And some of them don't talk a whole lot about it because they're, they're, they're not trying to impress anybody. They're not. And that's the way it should be. But I'm here to tell you, God says, look, you go in that closet, and thy father which seeth in secret, he says, I see where you're at, I know where you're at, and it's not so much he sees you like he's looking because he knows your position, your attitude, and God says, I'm going to reward thee openly. This country needs some people that will get into the closet and pray. 
These are people, we, we all need to be people that will pray for our families and pray for this country, pray for situations. And by the way, the Bible says in, in James 1, 5, if any of you lack wisdom, we all lack wisdom, folks. We, we've got all kinds of things that come into us. We go, wow, I wonder exactly what God says. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. And upbraideth not. In other words, he says, you come to me for wisdom, and I'm not going to shame you for doing that. I'm not going to shame you like, well, what are you doing here? It's something about coming to God and saying, God, I need wisdom, the decisions, everything. And God says, I will give it. I will give it. I will give it liberally. I'll give it more in abundance. You know, I used to pray that. I still pray it. And then I'd somehow go, well, I wonder if he gave it to me. God says, if you look and read it around that, he says, don't, don't, then don't ask then. So here's what I said. God, I'm asking, and the wisdom you give me, you said you'd give it, and that's what I'm going to go on. That's confidence. God says, I want you to be that way. Otherwise, you're like the wind that's blowing things up and down, and you don't know what's going on. Look, get a hold of your father. First of all, if you don't know he's your father, then settle that today. There's too many people that I believe, they've heard somebody say it, they heard some kind of cliche, but they can't point to the Word of God and say, you know, without a doubt, I know what God has told me. The Holy Spirit tells me I'm a child of God. This idea going years and years, all the time, not knowing whether you're saved. Hey, God said it. Believe Him. Put your trust in Him. And no matter what, you'll have God tell you, the Holy Spirit will tell you, and you'll know He's your Father. Amen. Now, you listen to everybody else, and you'll, you'll sometimes, eh. There's some well-meaning people say things. I don't, I don't go by cliches. I go by the Word of God. I say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. That's your voice. And you know what? If he's your father, you'll know it. You know your daddy. You ever been somewhere and you heard a voice say, man, I know that voice. Because you're familiar with it. And Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. You better make sure you hear the voice of God. Just like if I'm preaching a sermon here and you're a child of God, you know that, and you're going, man, something about that is just wrong, then you know what? The Holy Spirit will tell you that. It works the other way too. If someone's up speaking the words of God, and you need to listen to that. The, 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 the Spirit speaks to the churches. So coming back to this, he seeth in secret. So when we pray, imagine praying for something no one knows you've, you've done it. And you see it happen, you go, Lord, amen, and thank you. I don't think it's wrong to tell people, to, to bless people how God has answered a prayer. I think that's, that's that, I think it will encourage other people to pray. But if somebody strictly just pray, now, I, don't, I, I guess I've never met anybody that would do this. I don't suppose. But you take people that could pray, and the only reason why they did it was so somebody could hear them. Imagine that. Imagine the waste of that. Imagine why. These are people that don't know God, though, because their reward is right here on this earth. This, this is it. This is, this, is, this is all they have. So this morning, as I'm closing this, Ms. Vivian, you come on. Amazing the rewards that God's going to show you from the closet. So if you don't have a regular time of prayer, Start. And you say, man, where do I start? How about just say, Heavenly Father, thank you. And maybe not say a thing. Just, just set aside some time and let God speak to you. And just listen. Listen to the voice of God. Certainly read your Bible. God's not going to tell you something from this that's going to be in conflict with what he's going to tell you as we say the Holy Spirit impressed me. Now, there's people speak like that. But there's, that, that, that's, that's, that's a, that right there is one of the ways that confuses people. And God's not, God's not the author of confusion. God's not going to violate what he said right here. He's just not going to do it. And uh, God's going to speak to you the truth. And if he's your heavenly father, you'll know that. So I'm going to ask you to bow your head this morning.